Hello, welcome to Mr. Paul's Pantry. I'm Mr. Paul and today I'm going to make something called a Bakewell Slice. It is a regional thing from the UK, from a small town in Derbyshire, but um, it's now used all over the world. It's a nice little tea time treat and let's do it. <music> So for the pastry base, we're going to use a short crust pastry. You can use what recipe you like, but if you follow this, the recipe will be underneath the uh, description box, um, uh, underneath the video. If you make this amount, it will be just the right amount for the recipe. So we need 175 grams of plain flour. If you don't live in the UK or Europe, that's all purpose flour not self-raising. You need 75 grams of butter and just 30 millilitres of water. Now I'll explain. As a professional baker we weigh everything including water. Water millilitres and grams are exactly the same. So it's 175 of flour, 75 of butter and 30 grams of cold water. Now I'm using unsalted butter here, that's all I've got today. So I'm going to add a pinch of salt, okay? If you're using salted butter, you won't need to use the pinch of salt. So that's for the pastry, let's get making it. So for this recipe, we're going to need 150 grams of sugar, doesn't matter whether it's granulated or castor, 150 grams of ground almonds, 150 grams of butter, I use salted butter, you can use which you like, two eggs and 34 grams of plain flour, not self-raising. Right, let's get cooking. Right, we're going to make the pastry first. Just. of those and we're going to start with the flour that's 175 grams of plain flour not self-raising and 75 grams of butter now you can use a mixer for this if you want uh, I'm going to use my hands I'm not going to add any extra salt because I'm using salted butter. If you use unsalted butter, then you will need a pinch of salt in there, okay? So we just need to rub this gently into the, with your, the tips of your fingers and your thumb, rub the fat gently into the flour until it resembles sort of breadcrumbs. Um, the idea is just to get it evenly distributed throughout the flour. It's almost there now. It's very quick. I use room temperature butter. Some recipes will tell you, or some chefs on television tell you, always use chilled butter. I've found it doesn't make any difference to me. So there we are. That's the sort of consistency we're looking for and we're going to now add some water now i've measured the water i weigh everything as a commercial baker we weigh everything including water mills and grams for water are exactly the same i'm using 30 mils 30 mils or 30 grams of water so it's 175 of flour 75 of butter and 30 of water now sometimes if your flour is very dry, in Spain where I am it gets very hot in the summer, sometimes the flour gets a bit drier, I need to add slightly bit more than 30, but we'll see how it goes today. And we just need to mix that now until it all comes together, just like this first. And now we need to work that until it comes together. Just keep gently working it round. And I think I might need to add a little bit more than the 30 here, but we'll see. You see how it's starting to come together now? There. And I'll tell you another myth. 
People say, oh, you've got to have cool hands to make pastry and this, that, and the other. Makes no difference. Makes no difference. In my bakery, we actually mix it with a mixer, a food mixer, and it doesn't make any difference to pastry. Pastry's pastry. It might make a difference to cake mix, but not to pastry. Now, it's all coming together without any extra water, if you can see that now. So, once we've got all the bits and pieces out of the bottom of the bowl, pick them up, and there it's all gone. That's all we're looking for. A nice ball of pastry. Flatten it out a little bit. And the reason we flatten it out like that is the thinner it is, the quicker it cools. And we're going to put some cling film on that. And I'm going to pop that in the fridge now for about 30 minutes. Right, so we're going to make the base. This is the tin I'm going to use. The size is uh, 28 by 20 centimetres. Um, I'm using a non-stick one, but if you use an ordinary one, just put a piece of greaseproof paper or parchment in the bottom. Right? So let's, you know, this is the pastry that we've been <coughs> cooling down for 30 minutes. And we'll start rolling it out. And we need to roll it to the size of the tin. So just roughly that size. Okay. Flour the pin. We need to keep it in a, a rectangle if we can. We don't want to roll it round. So what I like to do first of all, just get the thing moving, I like to do the length first. Now always keep your pastry moving. Don't keep rolling and rolling and rolling. Keep moving it about on your bench. That way it won't stick. Well, I've got the marks here, so I can see that's almost, almost to the correct length. So now we'll do the width. Don't forget, keep moving it about. Try the tin. Yes, it's almost there. Almost there. Now what we need to do is to roll the pastry on the pin and then roll it back out onto the tin, like that. And now we're going to push the pastry down into the edge without breaking it, if we can. Just gently into the corners. Now if you've got hot hands and you find the pastry is a bit sticky, then just take a bit of pastry and push it into the corner like that. Because that way the pastry won't stick to itself. It'll just make it nice and even. Okay. There we are. And then all we do is trim round that and we're ready to go. Now to make the filling. First thing we're going to do is to add the sugar. Remember it's all 125 grams of the sugar and the butter. going to mix those, cream them together. 
You can use a hand electric mixer for this if you want. I don't find it's really worth worrying about. Once you get the butter to room temperature, it'll soon mix in all right. It's going quite nicely now. Now there, that took three minutes in real time. Just three minutes in real time. And we're going to add to that one of the eggs and mix that in. Everything should be at room temperature. That way you won't get any curdling of your mixture. If it curdles it's not the end of the world but it does give a nicer texture in the end bake if you haven't. And once that's all incorporated, we're going to add the second egg. And you can see that's mixing in nicely. Now the next thing we add is the ground almonds and the flour. 34 grams of flour. Remember that's plain flour and we just need to mix all this together now. Make sure it's all incorporated. Now depending on the size of the eggs you've used, I've used medium eggs and this is a little bit stiff. See, it should drop off the spoon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a little drop of milk. About probably a very scant tablespoon or probably a dessert spoon, there's not much gone in. It was a little tiny drop more, it should just drop off the spoon. So that's a good tablespoon gone in there now. Don't make it too slack though, too wet. There you can see now the difference. It's just going to fall off the spoon on its own. And that's the mixture and we're all ready to put it in the case which has been sitting in the fridge just chilling out. Now we're going to fill the pastry case. One thing I did forget when I was showing you the ingredients to start with, I forgot that we're going to use some jam. I'm using strawberry jam here, but traditionally it's a raspberry jam, but um, a lot of people don't like the seeds in raspberry jam, so I'm using strawberry today. Now you want two good tablespoons, possibly a bit more. I might as well use what's in here, I think. Spread that all over the base. Nice generous coating. Don't overcoat it because it'll only boil over if you if you do. Here we go. And now we're going to put on the filling. You see what I meant about it just dropping off the spoon? That's just the right consistency. There we are. Excuse me. Now we need to spread this to the edge. 
And what we try to do with this is so we can't see any jam between the filling and the pastry. Otherwise it will start to boil up and not look very nice on top. Just gently, don't rush it, just gently tease it to the edge. And there we have it. And all that remains now for us is to sprinkle some slivered almonds on the top. We don't need a lot, just to make the top look a bit. Sometimes I use toasted almonds, other times, like today, I forget to toast them. <laughs> when you're making a video, it's, it's bad enough cooking something, but when you're making a video and trying to remember to do everything, and then realizing when you've finished filming it, you forgot to do this, you got to say that, and you can't fit it in. You've either got to start again or scrap the whole thing. Anyway, there it is ready to go into the oven at 180 degrees. Now, if you've got a fan oven, you might need to turn it down 20 degrees, but it needs cooking until the filling is pale golden brown and springy to the touch. It doesn't want to be wet, okay? Let's put it in the oven and see you in a minute. Well, in 30 minutes. Well, here we are. That's after 25 minutes in the oven at 170. It's springy to the touch. You see that? I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Springy to the touch. It's golden brown, not too brown. And the jam's boiled out a little bit at this corner here, but never mind. I've got to allow that to cool now, and then we'll cut it into individual portions. So I'm going to have a cup of tea and wait, and I'll see you in a short while. And here we have it, the finished product. Beautifully moist, bake well slice. If you've enjoyed this video, Go down underneath and give it a thumbs up please. If you haven't subscribed already, press the subscribe button and you'll see a little bell icon. C click on that and that'll make sure you're informed every time I upload a new video. If you have any comments, anything at all, leave those underneath as well. I'll be pleased to read them. So it's Mr Paul saying bye for now and see you next time. Bye.